That's why people are telling me like this. Eh? I'm even managing with these people. They don't even know what they're talking. <laughs> we are teaching them every day that there's a new life, there's a new covenant. I will talk this one, we'll be talking that one. Oh God, what do we do now? So Jesus Christ took them to the mountain top and then trusted God. <laughs> what you saw is an infinity dimension body. Mm-hmm. When it manifested, glory, infinity dimension body. So by the time that phase of glory slowed down, of course in glory we had seen somebody who never died, Elisha. Yeah. Moses who died, yeah. whose body was never found, yeah. had entered from different dimensions. Yeah. Because the dimension where yeah. Elijah was, yeah. the dimension where Moses came yeah. from, yeah. different dimensions. Yeah. So that's why they say only children and uh, mathematicians understand hyper dimensions easily. So when we say somebody is spiritual, you're just talking about people who have an understanding of hyper dimensions. And the greatest of all is the person who has the kind of spirit God has, which is the infinity dimension spirit. I would say if you are 4D, you can understand 3D. If you are 10D, you can understand. And let's leave that for now. Yes, so hello, we're just going online right now. And we're just going to be discussing. We're addressing somebody who's out there just before you travel. Yes, just before you get that Canada. Visa. Canada, <laughs> or uh, Australia, or Australia, Australia or America, America, uh, uh, Middle East, uh, Middle UAE, East, UAE uh, yes. Abu Dhabi, Dubai. Dubai. In fact, there's Part one, uh, Singapore. Singapore. The last time I traveled, I met some young men. Yeah. Singapore and all those places. Just before you exit Nigeria, yeah. listen, to, listen to this, to this yeah. gist, yeah. what we're about to discuss here. Yeah. So, go. Mm-hmm. Now, is there a temptation? That is justified to leave Nigeria or not? Let's look at that first. Yes. For a young man, for young yes. men, yes. what is the temptation? The temptation of a better life, which you think. Yes. A better, better, life. better life. So everybody wants a better life. Yes. Let's break it down. Mm-hmm. What makes a young man in Nigeria want to exit Nigeria at all costs, to the point that they are crossing deserts, entering boats, and all that? You know, there are several things that, mm-hmm. um, uh, like he said, in a better life. Mm-hmm. Uh, young Nigerians, young people generally want to, uh, let, let's just say Nigerians. Okay. You know, let's, let's, let's Especially Nigerians. Mm-hmm. We, you, you want to grow up in a place where there is safety and security. Mm-hmm. You know, where, where you can sleep in the night and wake up in the morning and you don't need to see with one eyes open uh-huh. so, you know people want safety and security uh-huh. people want, young people want jobs we have hundreds of thousands millions of young people graduating from schools mm-hmm. and there is no guarantee mm-hmm. that they will get a job in fact i was telling someone that we live in a unique um time where young people are forcing to entrepreneurship so in the past Five years, or the illusion of surge. entrepreneurship. Illusion, yeah. The, you know, there's been a surge in young entrepreneurs. Young entrepreneurs, they are all jumping and jumping out and wanting to start businesses. You know, and I, I guess that is as a result of so many years of you know coming out and there are no jobs. Okay, know. let me substitute one or two things then. Maybe you will agree. Maybe we will disagree. Yeah. We are saying now that a lot of young people see no hope here. Exactly. 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 So it's like what you see. Yes. Is that there's nothing there's available nothing. ahead, yes. and there's a possibility that we watch films, we've listened to the news, we've seen CNN, exactly. we've seen we have friends, who internet, are, you know, we have friends who are, are yeah. and then they are telling you, oh, it's it's the the picture picture life, yeah. So yeah. can I capture that other part? Apart from es- yeah, we know the other side. Okay, yeah. apart from escaping the frustration and hopelessness, mm-hmm. apparent seemingly hopelessness. Mm-hmm. Now it means that we want to go to a place where two things are available. Where they value your life. Yes. I think that captures most of the things. Yes. And two, where your potentials can develop. Definitely. Yes. I think you, you got it. Yes. Am yes. I capturing yes. it right? Yes. 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 Where they give value to your life, yes. where your potentials yes. can be developed. So it means that if in Nigeria we can get to a place where there will be value to the life of every citizen, yes. and where your potentials too can develop, then nobody will really want to live. Yes, yes. If, 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 if life gets to that point, for yes. I mean, look, there's lots of people. Well, let's introduce ourselves to people who are listening and then 
in the next uh, 15 20 minutes if you want to join us we'll give you our phone number you can call in and you know contribute to this serious discussion but if you know anybody who wants to travel out of nigeria as a result of these things that we've mentioned yeah. the person wants to exit because he doesn't see any future this is future uh, and the person is looking for somewhere where they will give value to their lives and where their potentials can develop then you join us in this uh, discussion so we are looking at the fact now that you have mentioned this now let me talk to you from another generation and then you guys can answer my name is Larry Thompson and these are more or less my sons you see and then they will introduce themselves one by one as they make contributions as a youth I remember in my days in college going abroad was not a big deal we didn't need to fill any forms and bring out your, the certificate of your grandfather's graveyard, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. I remember that you will buy a ticket, head for the airport. Yes. In most cases, I think America, you need a visa, but then how many people were applying for American visas? I think the Britain was mostly Britain. Britain was, yeah. yeah, British. yeah to, to be British was the ultimate then, yeah. you know? So head for the airport, and when you get to Heathrow, and then later Gatwick, they ask you a few questions, how long you want to stay and all that. Boom! Six months. You are stamped in. Now, I remember that in those days, a lot of people used to ask us abroad that, who's sponsoring your holiday? How, I mean, how, how, how manage? I mean, I can still vividly remember a number of questions like that I did not understand then. Yeah. This was late 70s, early 80s. I was already in university. People used to wonder, how come so many of you just come out of Nigeria and then we go back? Yeah. <laughs> in fact, let me tell you something happened to me in 1983. I ran out of, of pound sterling and I had naira on me. Maybe about 300 or 400 naira or something on me. Then I went to the Bureau of Change in London and they said it was 3 point something to 1. 3 point something to 1. Out of annoyance, I put my money back in my pocket. I just changed small. Back in my pocket, I was spending when I get to Nigeria, and I refused to change the money at three point <laughs> one pound to three naira sixty oh, wow. or something. Yeah. I was very annoyed, and I left. Now, your father didn't have to be very rich in those days to travel out of the country. Mm -hmm. You know, my friends in university, would you just save up, work, do some business here and there, save your money, come summer time, you're off. And then you are back again when uh, summer is over. It was later generations that began to stay back, yeah. hoping to gather something and then come back to come and join us in Nigeria gradually, right? Yeah. Good. So now, for you guys, it's different. Totally different. Okay, introduce yourself and talk to us. Totally different. Uh, introduce oh, yourself and talk to us. My name is uh, Martins. Perry Martins. Perry Martins. Good. Yes. So, talking about our experience when it comes to uh, traveling out of the country, I think in, in I still remember in my in my secondary school days, the entirety of all I wanted to do that period was to get out of the country. Just get out of the country. Just get out of the country, because it felt so hopeless. It felt because you 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 hear your leaders tell you same thing over and over. Oh, I'll come in, I'll do this, I'll do that, I'll do that. At the end of the day, that person's tenure will come to an end and those things are not achieved. Things are as basic as far as time. Hmm. So, back then, I was applying for schools and that was the heydays of uh, American Visa. Okay. Visa Lodge. It was quite popular then. I think I still remember in the, the, the church I was, I was worshipping then, Reverend U.S. and come back with the hard copies of American visa and all the youths, everybody's applying, everybody, because everybody wanted to get out of the country. So it was a fourth heaven. Yeah! <laughs> everybody's yeah. everybody applying. And when one person wins down on tree, the way it will be celebrated in church, hey. all the young people are... Elijah! <laughs> you know, yeah. 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 He's, out, he's out of this world. Yeah. I'm telling you, he's out of this world. Okay, problem. so from that time till now, Things improved or things got better? No, for me, uh, for me, I got to the point where I, 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 I knew I, I didn't want to do that anymore. I wasn't interested in traveling out anymore. Yes. Why? What changed your mind? Because because I. But you had attempted several. Oh, several. Okay. Oh, I, I can't begin to. To the point that um, they, they stopped. 
I think the US visa at some point stopped giving, allowing Nigerians mm -hmm. to participate in the visa lottery. Yes. You know, to that point, you know, I before emptying all of Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so but I got to the point where I thought that um, there's a whole lot to be done from this part. I think I, I began to listen to men and women who began to make me understand that there, there are so many opportunities in Nigeria. Okay. And we can try and so them. you you now decided now. You now decided that okay, let me since well, but first of all, you have tried and tried. I had tried, oh, and I had no tried. show. <laughs> it didn't work. Road roadblocks. <laughs> yeah. They now come down. I now come down. Yeah. But of course, when I I have I've talked to many young men and women, mm. I remember one of my friends, one young man who tried to cross the Z desert. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Or, 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 I mean, they go to other days or something like that yes. from Niger, Niamey. Yeah, from from yes. there, they cross the desert, then they get yeah, to one Libya, point, yeah, Libya. Yeah, cross into Spain, into Spain. Look, when he told me the harrows of that journey yeah. and how he was able to manage to make it back, of course, some died. A lot of people died. And were buried in the desert sands. Things happened. So, Things happened. the ge younger generations are now tougher yes. yeah. than our own generation, definitely. Where then we didn't need to be as tough. Yes. So, in your case, you couldn't get out. Yeah. So but I had, you I had, sat down. I had friends. In fact, I, in, in fact, they, they are, I have the particular young man I know who told me that he preferred to be in the prison in Netherlands. He preferred to be in prison in, prison in Netherlands. In Netherlands. Come back to Nigeria. So that's the perception. Yes. Okay. Now, so it means that the average young man in Nigeria actually wants to get out. Yes. And if he has the opportunity to get, he's going to get out. Now, let us now look. There are some extremes. The ones who are able to uh, cross deserts, like you said, and all these other things, and the ones who keep trying. But on the average, what of visas? How many of your generation do you think can secure visas legitimately to go out? Um, in a scale of 100, I would say 5%. <laughs> 5 out of 100. Five is a good man, right? Yeah. Five out of every hundred. For those who are actually working legit, yes, they legit business and they could find their financial record. But those are one of those requirements. Very few. So who those who can legitimately show that they've been working, they've been so so and so and so and. I would say that. Yeah. Oh, even with that. Yes. Even with that, it's a very you know. So whether you are going to, so, so, I, I think it also depends on which are the countries that are most popular. Mm -hmm. I think it depends on the countries. Right, right now, yeah. you know, depends on the country. Yeah, right yeah. now, because yeah. the majority of people, young people, want to go to Canada. Yeah. Canada right now. Yeah. Canada is better than. That's why not US? Uh, the reason why people are choosing Canada is because uh, in their mind, in terms of racism. They have been accepted. Yes. Better accepted. They, they yeah. Wait, wait, wait. He's just said something that we need yeah. to quickly discuss. Yeah. It means that in your generation, mm -hmm. they are making you feel unwanted somehow. You feel unwanted in Nigeria. Yeah, okay. So I, I think the challenge is so one of some of the challenges uh, is that because of the the, the entire political uh, atmosphere, yes. it has deteriorated the value that you who had in your days, yes. how they saw the source as potentially so, yes. useful. Yes. 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 So we are looking more like a web of users. Nuisance. Yes. A burden. Use, exactly. They yes. use us as a bid. You know, yeah. to to achieve what you want to achieve. And yes. then throw you aside. Yes. So, so intrinsically it's like there's not much value on your life. So yeah. two things, two things. Mm. Like, let's, let's, let's let us so that we'll be very clear on the two things. One is the the, the increase in cyber Cybercrime. Yeah, it's a major. Yeah, it's a major uh, reason why visas are denied. So many limitations are placed on Nigerians. That's one. Then two is the obvious political situation. It has devalued the the the, the personality of yes. the Nigeria. Of the Nigeria. So these two things, I feel, are a major factor. Okay. So which if. Young youth Nigerians had their chance. Which country would be the first port of call? Uh, you're talking about Canada and Australia. I mean, if they had, if, if, they, had, had, their if they had their US, chance, US, US is the call. Ah. Yes. Now, what is about the US in particular? Most Nigerians. The fact that one, it's a, it's a multi racial, racial so oh, diversity. So exactly, diversity is good. Then the opportunities. Then the fact that the American dream. Exactly. 
That America. so it's not because America is America, but because America has the American dream. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So that you can come and make and, it. And make it. Yes. So it's the dream actually that is the Leo. Yes. Okay, apart from America, what's the next part of? What was the yes, next? That's one? when you must start coming Canada. Canada, then yeah. Australia. Yeah. Australia. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, let's go on. After yeah. Australia, what kind yeah. of yeah. That's when yeah. Europe now comes. Europe. Yeah, that's that's right. countries like we are now. The UK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, UK yeah. used to be number one in our time. Yeah, UK used to be number one in our time. But, but not anymore. Not anymore, yeah. No, no, why? No, why, no, why not no, UK? Why not London? Yeah, let's talk about the Europe. Wait, where? No, you're talking about the Highlands. Which Highlands? Oh, Netherlands. Which islands? Netherlands. Oh, Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, where, where? Call the countries, let me know. I want to know. Holland. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's they just want to get us. Get out. Actually, one young man I met in America was visiting from Holland, and he told me how he got to Holland maybe 16, 17 years ago. Mm-hmm. That he was playing football when they said his passport was ready. Of course, the passport was in mm-hmm. And they will coach you, there are people who coach them. Mm-hmm. And when you get to the Netherlands, the first night, they told me that you will be told, look, go to a nightclub. Because once you pay, you can dance and you find somewhere to sleep. Mm-hmm. So the first thing is you can find somewhere to sleep. And then the hope was that while you are in the nightclub, when the citizens come, yeah. whether black or white, yeah. especially white, yeah. if you know how to dance well, mm-hmm. somebody may, who, may, may just well, that's part of it. engage you. <laughs> that happens. And uh, some of them got married like that yes. through dancing. Yes. And if you don't know how to dance, <laughs> while, while I'm, while I'm you. Now, so this actually goes further to devalue inside you. Yes. You have to sleep in nightclub. You have to this. You have to that. Children come from homes that are protected. Mm. From a nation where we used to be so. I mean, you couldn't talk to us anyhow. Yes. Who are Nigerians? And we still are like that. We're, my generation, we're still like that. You don't yeah. talk to us you, anyhow. You know, sir, we have people begin to deal with the the prostitution situation. Hey. The, the 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 because the entire middle belt of Nigeria, especially the Benin area. Yes. They are big on that in Europe. Yeah, and there's something, we, to, to there's something we also need to understand about that part because uh, my mom happened to be from that. Yes. Uh, and their psychology, their philosophy is at least, at least yes. one, of one of the church on that family, but every family must be in Italy. Italy. For, it, for Central Europe. Ah. For prostitution. Not only for prostitution. If it's for the money, yeah. Most it's for the money, money. But the the yeah, the, the law most times is yes. for the money, yeah. For most times. Anyhow, yes. at all costs. Mm-hmm. To make life better for those. As to the point people. that they can they go ahead to sell family properties. Or yes. if mother can join the fanat if a court. Yes. Just a pass, sell over and get some things yes. to push the car. Just to get that visa. Yes. And I, I, I live for Europe. Okay, okay. Let's leave you. What is the next port of call? Uh, yeah, okay. Which now countries? Talk about, at the point, you talk about the UAE. The UAE, comes, UAE comes after yeah. Europe. Yeah. yeah if right. you can't make U- Europe, then you go for UAE. Yeah, yeah. Okay, UAE countries like uh, Abu Dhabi, Dubai, Dubai Sharjah. Okay, like, okay. Uh, okay. Then after that, after the UAE, what, what's next? In South Africa. SA. SA. Yeah. Yes. Really? Unfortunately. And let's go. Forget something of recently. Now people will start hiring Ghana. Ah, Ghana. No, yes. 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 yes, yes. Okay, okay. But yes. see, let's let's keep going. So, um, South Africa, Ghana, any other countries? What are Malaysia? All those countries. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Are we going to go there too? Yeah, yeah. 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 Malaysia. Yeah. The community. Yeah. Yeah. Young people. Young people. In fact, in fact, the truth is, most of the guys that are in to the organ yeah, business. Yeah. 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 Transplants. Yes. That's the removing your parts, selling your body parts. Yeah. Malaysia. Yeah. 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 Okay, now let's, <laughs> shift, let's, let's shift gears a bit. Now, we need to begin to look at solutions. We need to begin to look at whether yes. it's an illusion yeah. or reality. Yeah. But to be able to do that, we need practical experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's why you are the king now for the next few minutes. Okay, yeah. Now, he tried his best, he couldn't get out. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, he collected his boots and sat down, zipped up his boots and said, look, let's fix this. He's married now, he's 
you know, integrated. Yeah. Uh, not as if you are fully satisfied, but at least you are. Yeah, we're, 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 we're getting there. We're, we're pushing. We're getting there, yeah. You're pushing. Yeah. Okay. So, talk to us. What's the name? What's your own experience? Yeah, Tell my me. name is Abraham Wizaka. And uh, my experience traveling as of leaving the shores of Nigeria is, is, is amazing because, uh, like I said, I came from a home whereby you just, one of the family just have to be there hmm. to uh, make the money and put the family on the map. Yeah. So, uh, the first attempt was Poland. That was in Poland! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually, I was supposed to go in for a course, for a social work course, and uh, the school fees actually scaled my family up with that, so I couldn't. Oh, so uh, the whole family was in the know? Yeah, they okay. know everybody. <laughs> okay, but your case, you're a guy. Yeah. Are there cases when, even with girls, the whole family is in the know? No, this one is basically just for me. So for you. Yeah, yeah, the ladies were just because of the, the background of my mom and dad, mm. they didn't want the idea of their daughters going to do prostitution. Oh, they were very particular, they yeah, didn't yeah. want their daughters in prostitution. Yeah. But are there families that don't care? Yeah, they are. They have. They a few, have. A few my, families. Yeah, I can relate to my cousin. Yes. Yeah, my dad's elder brother. Jesus. Our first daughter. At the point, it was a tension in the family because of uh, my dad. And you kicked against it. Yeah, they were like, why would you do that? And, and actually it was my uncle's wife, yeah. my mother, that actually pushed and processed them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so, okay, you mean, couldn't get to Poland. <laughs> no, you do you Poland. speak Polish? I want to know how because okay, let's imagine. Oh, that. I, yeah, I, I could have. You will have learnt it. Yeah, there are just in Japan and then if they speak uh, the fluent Japanese. Yes, yes. And black. Is it black guy? And then he's wait, wait. You mean you just learn the language? Yes, there's yeah, a, there's a charm. Oh, you know, you just have, have to the... love the language. You know, you know, you have to love. Yourself. You have to love the language. Survivor. 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 Yes. And then you learn the language. Yes. Polish language. I'm telling you. How do you even say hello in Poland? <laughs> you don't worry about that again. Okay, okay. So you left Poland. What was yeah. the next choice? Uh, the next choice was just, it was even picked for me because I was in 2012. I was just and my uncle called, like, okay, ah, what country would you want to go to? I told him, I can't go to any country. I just told him, US, Canada, Australia. Those were the questions. I okay, what about? You eat the Dubai. I said, well, yes. Is it good? Yeah. Something, okay. Something, yeah, let's just try. Let's, let's try. Hmm. Let's start from there. And uh, he said, okay, he's going to try and process the tool, the papers, and that. And it's unfortunate that, oh, the, you don't need, you just need to pay the, the visa on arrival. So you don't Okay. Need, like we used to do yeah. for London in those days. Yeah. Visa on arrival. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they forgot the visa and the guy. Assisted me with some money I already had to get the, the ticket. And yeah, off I went with my bag. To UAE? Yeah. Which of the countries? Abu Dhabi, precisely. Abu Dhabi? Yeah. Hmm. And, no, actually, in UAE, with your UAE visa, you could, you could move around. Oh, um, really? Dubai, Abu oh. Dhabi, oh. Oh. Okay. So, uh, even while I was going, they already gave me some number of people I could talk to. And as I was landing, I was getting off the airport. My flight was eight hours, and I was supposed to sleep in an hotel, which was already booked for me. Yes. And when I found out, oh, it's just another three hours for me from Dubai to the, to Abu Dhabi, following the yeah, transit. Yeah. I said, well, well, let me just go and forget the hotel. And right there, I landed, and I made some calls, called the number they gave to me, and the other guy said, yeah, stay in Abu Dhabi because in the in Dubai oh. here, the image of Nigeria is oh. in, Dubai. Yeah, in Dubai. So the advice is to stay in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, stay in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is still fresh. Nigerians are not, but unfortunately, the news mm. was already there in Abu Dhabi. So, yeah, I stayed there for two months in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. yeah okay, let's look at this because in any nation where we keep our people, we give life value to the lives of our young ones. Mm. We don't like this kind of idea. Mm -hmm. How can young men? I mean, from families, we just thrust you out into the nations of the world where you don't speak their language. Mm -hmm. First of all, again, I think we need to look at the fact that uh, which visas are easier to get? Poland, European, or the UAE? The UAE. The UAE. The UAE. Who gives value to our lives more? I mean, who at least pretends to 
that we are, you know, dignified people more when they, when it comes to getting the visa. Oh, Do they respect us more in the UAE? Not really. No, just the UAE, UAE is just exploitation. <laughs> they just want your money. UAE, they don't want to want your money. They just need your money. Yeah, yeah. And, and, money, money and they want to go and work and well, develop the country. But I have a friend in Qatar, a very close friend of mine, who left to Qatar. At he, every, at the period he left, every day he would come here and be complaining. He work because they, it's practically slavery. Really? But, yeah. yeah. So in the UAE, you are a third class citizen. Yeah. Third class. And but depends though, as a class. professional. Okay, yes. did you, what kind of visa did you do with? A visa yeah. visa yeah, or working? I mean, yeah, I mean, the tourist visa. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So first of all, you're going to have problems because yeah. you come in as a tourist, you're not meant to earn money mm -hmm. and you're not, uh, you're supposed to come and spend money yeah. and then leave. Mm -hmm. So, but how do you now transit from in a tourist, from your tourist visa? Did you end up with a working permit? You can end up with a working permit. I did. You didn't? Yeah, so did. how do you normally get a working I, permit? In what they do, which was based on the advisory government, okay, when you come in, you get a job, there will be job, there are jobs. Okay. Right. You apply and you can go, you can call, there are some working interviews and that. And if you pass and the HR are comfortable with you, yes. they ask you, they, they, will, they will first give you an employment letter. Yes. When you're, you're okay with whatever they are offering you, mm -hmm. you sign, they sign and they, they get it back. And they also have a copy for you. You have a copy and they have okay. a copy. Then you're advised to exit. I'll come back. You know, when you exit, the they exit stamp is all they need on your passport. All right. They you scan it to them, they use it to process your work. So where do you exit to? And, you know, I, I came back to you. I, I was advised to come back to my country because there, there were many Nigerians in Iran. Okay. E yeah. Iran? Yeah, most of them will tell you, okay, they should move to. I don't know what they call it. There's a name, 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 there's a Rumor, not even rumor, I have had people that have done and come because their company was able to process their yes. time. There are so many people, so many forgotten employees there. Ew. As in, and they, you know, when was, they, they were was, just coming in, they will start, look, please, are you with anything? Do you have anything to give them for so that they can hold themselves? Because they are coming, they've been, they've been here three months waiting for their visa to come. And, that, and it's terrible. Some they it works like this. I mean, I can really explain some things. Some companies employ you, even with your third visa or your visa, uh -huh. visa, they employ you for the time being where a staff of a, one of the staff is on leave. Okay. To cover up. Uh -huh. So maybe your visa is supposed to expire three weeks. You can work for that three weeks and they pay you. We we'll still find your, your working employment letter just to make you feel like yeah, you are yourself. Then when you so they're playing with so our they, citizens. Yeah, they keep, they do that. They they're messing our people up big time. Yes. And it started when we, when our, when we, where we, we started our image. Which based on what now? What happened? Huh? We still Nigeria. Stealing. Things like that. Robbery. Murder. I messed up our images. Yeah. Okay, but let's talk about some good side. Let's be a bit humorous. This is getting too heavy. <laughs> this is getting too heavy. Yeah. At this point in time, we can give our phone numbers. Anybody <laughs> who wants to call and contribute, uh, if you have a pen there, mine is 0803 325 5455. 0803 325 5455. I'll give you a number if somebody wants to call you. Someone wants to call. I think it would be nice. The phone number and then. Okay, no, you can give your number. There's nothing anybody. There's nothing anybody wants to. Mm, okay. Uh, and I can just call you if you. Three four nine five one zero nine two. Okay, those two numbers are okay. So if you'd like to join in and you have something to contribute, just call any of those two numbers and then we can. On the lighter side, you are there for how many months now? Two months. Two months. Yeah. Now, what are the culture shock? What are the things you saw in Abu Dhabi that uh, were so different oh. from life in Nigeria? Um, the food or what? Everything. I yeah, the food for me, I I like experimenting. So I was yeah. I, 
I didn't hear you have a problem. What's that look like? Uh, the, the UAE, this is how it works. You barely see these people to see them talk. You know? They are strictly for business. They don't really, they don't really associate and they're not really, the, yeah, the, you, the, yeah, yeah, the, the Emiratis. The Emiratis, yeah, you, you don't really, you don't really see them, you see them talk, no, they, they are mainly busy, they are not taking business, yeah. Well, that's so, because you went there to work. Yeah, that's Because you go there for holiday, yeah, you yeah, will yeah, still meet them once in a while here and there. Yeah, because I already, my focus was, I need to get a job and yes. stay there for a while and then I work on it. So, um, but you don't meet other nationalities there. Yeah. So, there are different food. Yeah, I tried. I I I once heard in the Pakistan restaurant. Yeah, so Pakistani. Yeah, Pakistani okay. restaurants. Yeah, food was. <laughs> it was interesting. <laughs> very, very. The, the rice, the, the kind of rice, the curry, yeah, curry rice and green. I I I don't know. I loved it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Yeah. So, what else are the things that surprised you? Life. I mean, was life better in those two months or what? For me, it was. It was the experience. I came back. I went. For me, the two months experience I had, and compared with the experience I've had here, yeah, I just felt sorry for my country. You felt sorry for us? Yeah. <laughs> for after two months experience two in Abu Dhabi? Just two months. And let me, let me bring this. For three days when I came back, I couldn't sleep at night. I couldn't sleep straight at night because of the generator noise. Okay, no generator in Abu Dhabi? No, no. I, <laughs> I, 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 at the point with my phone, I was I, I was angry with the with the network with the way it was Bandwidth. it was dragging to connect to the side. I'm like oh, oh so I'm things are like too slow. Your it, it, ah, it was too slow. Okay, was, tell me the things now. So, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, generator, you are not used to generator. Yeah, noise. no, I wasn't in generator noise anymore. <laughs> I was even till now. Like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. I still on the mainland at the time when I was, before I went through when I came back. The reason one of the reasons why I moved to the highlands was because of the sanity, a little bit of a bit more sanity. Yeah, yeah, because there are some areas like in some estates, you yeah. hear generator noise. Okay. Yeah. Now you said generator, you also mentioned something. Internet speed. The internet speed was yes. uh, then their transport was. Okay, you get to the bus stop at even though you don't meet the the bus, at every five minutes the bus comes. There's another bus. Yeah. And the, the <laughs> and the value of their money. Now yeah. The value of their money also their money has value in the sense that oh uh, there's a distance, let's let me use a distance of okay from costing to Fadi, yes. such a distance, there you go with two the run, just coin. Okay. You can still use spend coin, yeah, two the yeah. run, you just drop into and move. And uh it was when I came back when I now saw a BRT with ACL. Okay. Not bad. No, not I'll be honest with this at least. Yeah. Uh -huh. then so we feel like people at least we have yeah. been at in the <laughs> Okay, yeah. what else again? Uh, okay, um, what okay, what of power supply? Oh, I know, you have said the uh, there's no generator, so you have the light. So did you change any of your habits? I mean, were there any way you had to retrain yourself or what? Yeah, the, yeah, like I said, the, the first three days I was in the UAE it was it was embarrassing. <laughs> I was with my brother and he was like, Don't worry, you get used to it. <laughs> hey, like what happened? What, uh, what is this? Okay, we we're talking and I looked at my phone and the battery was there. Like, ah, bros, let me quickly, let me quickly charge this one before. That was where I stopped. I said, before then. Before. <laughs> yeah, but I paused. <laughs> <before then, laughs> <I paused. laughs> and I paused because right there, my mind just said, no, this is not that yeah. So my brother and I looked at me and said, don't worry, you. You get used to it. So yeah. can't you see that? And can you see that there's light? You don't need twenty four seven. Yeah, there's light. So apart from light, what else again? Uh, the other one also was <laughs> okay. The other experience also apart from the phone thing was we were talking. I said, oh, let's go to the mall to go get something. And like, ah, tomorrow is Friday. And they told me, okay, the worship this worship time there is Fridays. So it's like, oh, tomorrow is worship days. Oh, let me okay Friday. Oh, my clothes are rough. Let me quickly iron I before. Am. He looked at me and said, no, well, you can't. You can't. You can't. Let's go. Yeah. Said, yeah. Well, then I said, I don't drop it. Like, ah, yeah. The uh, insurance cover me. There's light. <laughs> okay, go. okay. We thank God for your experience. But here yeah. you are. You're back home now. Yeah, I'm back home. You're back home now. Have things improved since you left? Um, Is there hope? Is there more hope? Let me speak from a natural man perspective. No, <laughs> not from a natural man perspective. Uh, from a natural man perspective, uh, mm -hmm. no. So yeah. if you had the opportunity to travel again, would you travel? Definitely. Again? Yeah, I'm going to take you twice. Okay, but now, <laughs> let us begin to round up on this note. And this yeah. is where we need to put in a lot of conclusions. Okay. Please, 
naturally between the UAE you went mm -hmm. and Nigeria, which is the more wealthy country naturally? Naturally. Who has more green grass, trees, land, water, and all that? Nigeria. Who? Huh? Nigeria. 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 So if we just remove people, Nigeria is richer. I, okay, let me quickly say this. Uh, I and my brother Andrew was waiting for a guy in, what is it? The guy from what country was it from? From UK, yeah, I came to work some. So we're talking like, ah, oh, what are you guys doing? He said, okay, where are you from? He said, Nigeria. Well, I said, where are you guys doing? Yes, oh, my brother said, he's saying, yeah, he's working. I'm like, what? You guys have one of, you guys are, you guys are one of the richest country. are supposed to be one of the richest country in the world. In the world. Unfortunately, they say, wow, unfortunately. Yeah. Yes. You were coming back, ah, God, God, they say, what are you guys doing here? What are you doing here? Yeah, that was the question. And so it doesn't make sense, sense. It doesn't make sense. It make sense. that paradise has come to hell. Yes, yeah. it doesn't make sense, uh, and it's it's of concern. Mm -hmm. You know, part of our uh, part of the reason why I gave, in fact, the truth is, I had an opportunity to travel to the U.S. I turned it down. Okay, I had an opportunity because I had a friend who. A, a, an American man who believed so much in me and wanted to get me a job as a music director in a church because she knew what I could do. An elderly, elderly person. Mm. I was friends with the family, with the sons. So but not for know. marriage? No, no, no. No, no, no you want to marry no, six no, years, no, five no, years old, somebody? No, no. Okay. I, I was friends with her son, so okay. it, you know, it was someone no, that no, saw, no, it's okay. saw what, what... I know some people are able to marry 25 years old and yeah, marry yeah, we, we 85, that, yeah. 80 years old woman. Yeah, there were things like ah. that. So, but... but so she 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 saw what I was doing in Nigeria yes. and was very impressed with it. She has always been partnering with what we were doing in okay. entertainment, and she wanted. Oh, me okay, to come that's here. your station. Yes, I wanted me to come to the US, yes. but I turned it. I turned it down because yes. I felt that Go on. that there's so much Nigeria has to offer. Yes, I know. And the question is that every young person should know that there are so there's so much opportunity. Yes, hello. In Nigeria, so much. Oh, uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh huh. I just can't wait for that angel. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Go on, so start. there's there's so much that Nigeria has to offer, and that is, I think that's all we want to tell young people yeah. today. No, no, but I want us to be very practical right now. Yes. I want us to be very practical. Let's look at this thing very well. We are saying that naturally everything we need in Nigeria is available in Nigeria. We have we need to be the including best human resources. Including human resources. Yes. So the resources. only thing that is missing is for us to get ourselves organized properly. Yes, sir. And handle things. Yes. yes. Okay. So it doesn't make sense that we leave paradise and we're going to deserts. Mm -hmm. Because somebody turned the desert yeah, into, into paradise. paradise. Yes. But we turned our paradise mm -hmm. yeah. into now, I don't know if I don't know if you're going to agree with me, but our problems have not been compounded because we now have uh, global terrorism issues. We now have global terrorism issues here, right? So it's like our problems have been compounded. The fear of death is spreading. Government is scattering. Things are just going awry. Now, I don't know if you agree with me, but I want to come from a perspective of somebody who is a few decades older than you guys and point out that right now in this country, all the generations alive today, in a way, are all victims. Victims of a system. Victims of the fact that we never could, we didn't think ahead, we couldn't think far, which is symptomatic of Africans. Africans are said to be intuitive, emotive, unscientific and incapable of critical thought. That's how they describe us. And we seem to be that way because we went through a slavery experience. And our people still cannot think deeply to know that we are the way we are because of what we went through. And nobody has ever addressed it. We keep thinking we are sharp and we are smart. So you agree with me that because every Nigerian seems to be so sharp and smart, that's why this place is like hell. But, but, but sir, my, 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 what about all our people that are all over the world yes. that are doing incredible things? Uh -huh. it, it, I mean, there's practically no nation that is progressively moving forward that you won't find in Nigeria, uh -huh. system and structure. I mean, look at the UK, for example, we have Nigerians who are mayors, 
Yes. Wow, you know, in the city council, buying wow. airports, you know, buying things, airports, things you know, like that. Things like that. Oh, yes. wow. So agree. when we say that we are that an African and incapable of critical thinking, yes, it it, be, it it sounds a little bit, you know, as an individual, you know. Okay, let me put it a, a better way for you to maybe you can grasp it now because what we are talking about here right now, there's one thing that. We have never learned years in Africa. It's called programming. You are a programmer, so you understand what I'm saying. Now, the reason why you can do well when they take you outside is because there's another program. And that program runs in a particular way. You get to the train station on time, you're going to do the work. You have to, everybody you meet, you see. Okay, for instance, in Nigeria, you can spit out of the window, you can throw paper anywhere. But you get to a country, you look around, there's no paper on the floor anywhere. Within a few hours, the system. <coughs> You are just. You are just. Yes. Now, because the system is rigged to bring out your potential, you now have the opportunity. So, you begin to excel. Yeah. But there's one thing that is very funny. Bring you from there back into this system. Yes. Absolutely. You'll be pissing in the streets in no, in, no, in no time at all. you find out now that there's something called programming. True. There's a program running in African nations. There's a program running in Nigeria. So it doesn't matter how individually anything you are, yeah. you cannot beat a program. That's why they tell you you can't beat the system. Hmm. Now, if, even when the system is not seemingly organized, look, it's called deterministic chaos. If you want to go and do research, you go and do research. If you have a pendulum, it will generate a circle or an arc, yeah. simple harmonic motion. Yes. If you break your pendulum to two and put an extra node and you swing it, it will generate something that looks like complete chaos. It will be so chaotic you will never believe it's generated by a mathematical formula. Just Google broken rod pendulum and watch the video. So it will swing, it will seem as if the chaos will go on until the joints wear and there will be meltdown. So what is happening right now is that there is a program at place in Nigeria that we have not yet learned how to neutralize it. And you see, programs are powerful because programs are written based on laws. I mean, you are a computer man, so you understand what I'm saying. Yes, is it not the programmer who determines the limitations? Yes. Is it not the programmer? Uh -huh. yeah. So in many ways, let me tell you why um, your generation and the legacy we can leave now in working across generations. I want to show you where what Nigeria really needs right now. Now, with the compounded fact that our lives are even further devalued by Boko Haram and all these kind of things that are coming in again, compounded with a program we never understood that is working. That program can go on for six, seven hundred years, generating chaos, almost as if it will scatter, but it will continue. So, if we can reprogram Nigeria, if we have the wisdom of the programming, you will find out that the wisdom of the program mean will help us to know why we don't have to be so sharp. The average Nigerian is so sharp, and like you mentioned, the average Emirati doesn't need to be that sharp. Because the program does work for him. What does the system do for him? Gives him value. Companies, there must be 51% ownership. So you can just be sitting down as a carpenter there, and a big company needs to come into, into the UAE. They must need your certificate, your, your signature. So the value has been given to you. It's a program. So what happened was that the UAE discovered a program. And it takes a program to beat a program. You can't beat a program using your determination. Look, uh, let's look at the program of creation. Law of gravity. If you just stand on this table and fast for six months, and say after six months fast, you want to jump down, and you will not obey the law of gravity, who is going to win? The program will win. So you want to agree with me right now that all we need in Nigeria is just for us to deprogram and reprogram. Okay. So, so let's, can we bring this down into layman? What are you telling the, 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 the student that is in school, the person that is in the office, listening to us right now, when we are, when we are saying reprogram and deprogram, what exactly are you saying? What I'm saying to your generation and the younger generations now is that you are too smart. Become a bit more foolish. If you want to have a future, become a bit more foolish. 
They become a bit more foolish and you may learn something. For example, I'm going to tell you something right now, point blank. Every African nation, the youths must escape because the program that we are running in Africa, we can't prosper. If there's corruption in Africa, nobody should be surprised. I'll give you an example. The economic program on the global scale is such that 54 nations of Africa, 10 dependent territories, contribute less than 3% of, of, of global trade. Less than 3% of global trade. Now, if 54 nations are 10 dependent territories, we have only 3% of global trade. How much does Nigeria have? Um, it has the greatest um, contribution. Huh? <laughs> Hello? The greatest contribution. Ah. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, sir. Let me call you back in a minute. Now, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. In terms of resources and needs. Okay, let me put this point blank to you. Hartsville Jackson International Airport, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Their annual budget is about the same as Nigeria, so consistently. So, 200 million people in Africa's largest country, have the same economy as one airport in another country. If I ask you now, why is one dollar equal to 360 naira? Why is one pound equal to 400 and something naira? By the time you finish explaining it, it's because one America is equal to 360 Nigerians. A lot of economists may blow hot, people may make noise about reserve. By the time you get beyond all the hot smoke. They went to economic schools in the Western world. They were grilled in the, pro the people who produced the program are the people who trained them. There's a global program with loaded dice. And until Nigeria, if Nigeria wants to become the leader of Africa, we must decode that global program or create another internal currency. We must learn to create an economy. Exactly. You just read my mind. Like what China did. Even, yes. the, what UAE, doing, yeah. even the UAE too lent programming and they reprogram. Let me ask you a question. Why do you think that when America got independence from Britain, instead of playing soccer, football, they insisted on inventing uh, American football? Why did they refuse to play cricket and invented baseball? Why did they refuse to nurse ties and wear suits? And insist on you know uh, chinos and uh, yes, why not wearing bowler hats and wearing baseball caps? Why? Why do you think Americans refuse to speak English and speak American instead? Let me tell you what the truth is: it has economic implications. You see, you know why your generations, it started with our generations, the ones before us, we all have inferiority complexes. We don't eat our food, we don't wear our clothes, we don't have value for anything we produce because the inferiority is inside us. It's a program. As a program. Now, something programmed that inferiority into all of us. Yes, it can go on for almost, it has a lifespan of about 650 years. And no, this is not taught in any university, it's not taught in any school. Actually, let me come to, I'm a pastor, so let me, let me come to the faith now. I'm sure you are going to church in Dubai. Yeah, 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 yeah. What was your experience in Dubai, to speak the truth, as a Nigerian Christian of your generation? <laughs> Tell me. It was different. different very different. Were you fervent there? Yeah. Uh -huh. Tell me how you were fervent there. I thought it was, I happened to see other, other, other nationalities who I'm, I'm from Nigeria and uh, they actually don't have the same challenges we face here and they So what do you think drives most of us to church here? Um poverty basically. Poverty. Yeah. <laughs> poverty. Yeah. Problems. Most, Problems. most of the people challenges. Yes, yes. most of us. Yes. Why we go to church is so that we can be successful, get make more money so that God will bless Okay, us. wait. The gospel you hear in Nigeria that we preach, mm -hmm. how successful will it be in UAE, in, in, uh, in a place like uh, Abu Dhabi? 0.01%. 0 0.01%? 0 0 0 0 yes. Yeah. The Emirati is not likely to be persuaded. Yeah, I know. Based on this Nigerian type of gospel. Yes. Come to God and you'll be rich. 
Tunes. Come to God and get visa. So an emirate, emirate, <laughs> so, so the emirate doesn't need God to get visa. He doesn't need God to eat. The national program provides that for him. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes and yes. Now I want to say to you that on a good day, the Nigerian church alone can save Nigeria. Yes. And I'll tell you why. Right now we are facing a war of terrorism. It's global. Yeah. And I told you, that's why I tell you that when people say, oh, uh, this party, that party, uh, this president said this, that person said that, I look and I'm laughing. Everybody is a victim. Mm -hmm. We are a victim of programs that locked us into where we are. We don't know that the way we fight from north and south is programmed. The way we do business is programmed. The program running in Nigeria produces criminals because of the scarcity of resources. Resources or the holding of the you know, you see, let me tell you why you will hold. Like when you go there now, they wanted to iron on shirt quickly. <laughs> they didn't tell you that don't bother to iron shirt quickly. Like, then nobody is taking. Nobody is taking. So even the audio I say is just a symptom. Uh, because I feel that there is no scarcity in Nigeria. There's no real scarcity, but yes. there's heavy scarcity. Heavy scarcity. Because if you don't want scarcity, scarcity, you must be able to process mm. and produce what you need. Mm. You can't have inferiority complex. Mm. Why do you prefer custard to camo? Mm. Oh, what are you drinking in, uh, what's that foreign name, compared to Zobo? Mm. Who told you that if they were the ones who packaged it and did it, Zobo would not be a, a global company today? Mm. You see, the major problem is not outside, it's inside all of us. Now, to beat it, we need a set of people because it's now compounded. The problem is now compounded. Before, we were a country which is like a patient that had, uh, you know, uh, malaria. malaria, then with other, uh, malaria fever, hepatitis B, and all that. But now, somebody has added Ebola. <laughs> now, Ebola does not answer to Panadol. So, what we're saying now is that now that there's terrorism, <coughs> The only people who can help Nigeria now are people who don't fear death. The people who are not meant to fear death are those who have eternal life. Mm. How many of you here are Christians born again? Let me see your hands. Okay. Put out your hand, don't let anybody else see you. <laughs> mm. Now, what defines you really is that if you truly have eternal life, you have no fear of death anymore. So if Believers have no fear of death anymore. Then you find out that neither poverty nor terrorism nor anything can threaten you. Because Hebrews chapter 2, for as much as the children were partakers of flesh and blood, he himself also likewise took part of the same. Why did he do it? He came in the form of flesh or like us, so that he can through death defeat he that had the power of death. That is the devil and set free all those who through their lives are subject to bondage through the fear of death. So if you know you can live to be 140 years old, if you have not yet got a degree by age 40, will you be worried? No. What about you graduate by the time you are 55 or 90? If you know you are going to celebrate your 658th birthday, if you are not yet married and you are only 250 years old, will you be in a hurry to marry? If you can't marry at 250, you marry at 450. So the truth is this, eternal life is a quality of life that goes beyond time. So if the first set of people who can face the Boko Haram, can face the Shiites, can face all the desperados in Nigeria, must be those who have eternal life. Because when they threaten you, you just be laughing. What are you using to threaten us? When to live is Christ. <laughs> to die is what? Yeah. Go and say that in church. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you begin to see what we're saying now. Because, you see, our faith is meant to be a program too. It reprograms people. It changes your values. Now, Nigeria needs a generation of people who can make a sacrifice to reprogram Nigeria. Without that, we are finished. The best set of people who is easiest to persuade to make that sacrifice is Christians. If you follow the example of Jesus Christ, for... You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, for our sake he became poor. <laughs> He's not just quoting it and everybody rushing. 
Now, there are many people in Nigeria who say God sent them to make Nigerians rich. As long as the whole of African nations, 54 nations, and 10 dependent territories manage only 4%, less than 4% of global trade, there is no magic that you are pretending to be calling miracle that anybody can do. In the Bible, in Samaria, when the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, the economy changed by the next day. The foreign exchange value was affected the next day. Prices crashed. So, have you seen any price crash in Nigeria? Have you seen anything? Why? Because your inferiority complex is still there. Fear of death is still there. Everything that the faith is supposed to wipe out is still available. So, you still buy generator of I pass my neighbor. So, what am I going to point out to you? The program that our faith represents, if you get the original, you'll find out that it is, instead of the church where the pastor is bringing visa and showing people, mm -hmm. and the people are now people are giving testimony, giving testimony of, of visa, visa and dreaming of visa and all that. Look, you know something that, look, first of all, your life has a specific direction. You are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works that God had before ordained, not just now. You who believe that, you are different from somebody who thinks he's under economic struggles. Something inside you is different from that person. This is what your faith is meant to do for you. So, let us even say that the church continues to fail because we have been here before in the days of slave trade. This is how life was in Africa. It took people who did not count their life as anything but preferred Christ to change the game to where we are today. So there must be a generation of believers who hear a genuine gospel, whose treasures are where? Uh -huh. Their main treasure is a hell. Because where a man's treasure is? Uh -huh. So the point now is, is that what is really destroying us is whatever is destroying the church in this nation. If the church gets it right, the church will look. Jesus Christ came to give value not to the life of Christian, but to the life of every man. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Who so ever. Uh -huh. uh, but how? Some people think that for God so loved the world, loved the church, is what the Bible says. For God so loved the church, He gave His begotten Son. Is it for God so loved the church or for God so loved the world? So, whether it's Shekau, whether it is uh, Fulani Hasma, whether it is uh, Boko Haram, or anybody, it is the church that should establish that the value of the life of the Nigerian citizen is very high. Everything else will cascade from there. As long as the value of our lives are low, nothing can happen. As long as we continue to be predatory, predator prey in Nigeria, what we are practicing, when a Boko Haram kills a pregnant woman with a baby in her belly, is because he believes he has turned to a predator, a wolf, and the woman is a lamb. Actually, it's the, called the mark of the beast. Now, business in Nigeria is predator prey. Mm -hmm. Economy, predator prey. Mm -hmm. Appointment of uh, ministers, mm -hmm. predator prey. Winner take all. Yes. Anything that you do anywhere, mm -hmm. predator prey. It's not that, it doesn't matter whether it's FPP or CPP that is in power. Predator prey. Now, who can change that narrative? Who can reprogram the country? Was it not people like Ajayi Kada who started it? Killing of twins? And they were able to stop it by reprogramming? Mary Sleso? People like that? Sacrifice everything until everybody saw the value of life. Then the abundance of Nigeria... Look, let me tell you the truth. My junior mother, I was in America about almost 20 years ago. I went in there, my junior brother, I just saw a Mercedes in front of his house. I said, ah, whose car is this? Nice looking Mercedes. He said, it's the Gardner Soul. <laughs> yes, the Gardner Soul. He said, it was a weekend, and normally he brings a truck. But because he probably was going somewhere, he was going to use the, 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 the Mercedes to tow his cart, put it somewhere, and then go off for uh, the weekend, you know. So I said, Gardner, he said, yes. The program is such that a gardener can drive a Mercedes-Benz if that is what 
is after, as long as you can work for it. It's a program. Your voice is, is low now. I don't know what's happening sure. to you. You have to speak loud. I can't hear you. <laughs> so I am saying this program. Yes. Should we? Is it what it's been? It's happening in Ghana right now, because when we were listing the countries that Nigerians were interested in going to, remember that we included Ghana because mm -hmm. apparently they are, it seems that their system is working now. Let's not forget that Ghana has always been the elder brother of Nigeria. If you go back to the days of Nkrumah, Pan-Africanism, the idea to revalue the African's life had gained more traction in Ghana before it ever gained traction in Nigeria. Okay? Let's not forget that. That Ghana has always been striving to be the forefront. The Black Star, that emblem was taken from Marcus Garvey. Who first proclaimed himself the first president of Africa, even though he never came to Africa before. Have you ever heard about Marcos Gavi? Yeah. Have, have your people ever read about Marcos Gavi? Okay. They struggled to revalue the life of the African, seriously. Okay? Now, having said that, Ghanaian president, Maha, I mean, I heard one of his speeches recently, they are straining against this thing, seriously. But the only challenge I have is this is that. With all this training, Ghana has not really, from what I see, they have not discovered that there's a program at work. So you see, you can struggle against the program, but sooner or later, the program, the program will prevail. So my challenge is that in as much as I appreciate what is going on in Ghana, don't forget that even Rwanda, just before the genocide, mm -hmm. the economy was booming, everything was okay, everybody was shouting at all this well. But what of the problem on the inside? of the people? What of the inferiority complex? Now, sometimes the global uh, machinery will create some model African countries every now and then, tokenism, to make you people feel good with yourselves. But if you want to know the answer to all these ones, the answer is in Ghana. The answer to the Nigerian problem is in Ghana. There's a legacy of an African-American who discovered this program. I'm just telling you about now. And he wrote a book in 1906. It's a book every pastor should read. The book was titled The Souls of Black Folk. W.E.B. Du Bois. Yeah. If you see the description of what he was describing, of the black man who had been sold in slavery, I passed my neighbor generator is part of the narrative. Exactly the way Nigerians are. So how can somebody write a book in 1906 describing the people in 2019? If it's not a program. So W.E.B. Du Bois saw that program. He described it as a veil. Now, he moved to Ghana. He couldn't... You know, there's a revelation that would drive you out of town, like John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. American. He was American. Yeah, American. He left America and resettled in Ghana. He died in Ghana. His library is in Ghana. His books are in Ghana. His diaries are in Ghana. But the fact that Ghanaians have not yet begun to reproduce those things and understand and decode it tells me that the Ghanaian prosperity is for a season. The program will kick into place. That's why it is good when Nigeria works with Ghana rather than fight Ghana. Huh? Africa Look at Rwanda now, they have a good leadership. Yes, and they are seemingly... They are seemingly doing well. Yes. Let the leader die. Ah, which is the challenge Africa has. Because we don't it's not a program. Mm -hmm. yes. Because we don't know how to program. program. It has not become a culture. It is not a matter of culture, it is not a program. program. So when you write programs in computer, so you know what I'm saying. Yeah. You see? Once the revolutionary president goes, you'll find out that it's like Martin Luther King Jr. died mm -hmm. because he did not leave a program behind. Nobody has been able to make progress like him. Uh, this man, Nyerere, yes. what is 
Nigeria. What is uh, the guy, uh, uh, Tanzania? What is the president of Rwanda doing that he really did not do in his time? He really led by example. Is there not Magufuli there to lead him by example? But you know what the truth is? As long as they don't learn how to write programs, how do write programs? That's a subject matter <laughs> <laughs> of another day. <laughs> For today, we are just going to be rounding up now. <laughs> no, no, there's no problem about how to write program. I mean, you see, that's why I said they don't teach anybody in universities how to write national programs. It's not a course that is offered in any school, anywhere, or institution. Most nations guard the secret of programming. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you see the kind of research I've had to do to even come near it. Books written in 1906. You have to dig really deep. You need the mind of Christ to discover programming and how it is done. Why? What can save us in Nigeria today is programming, but the best place to apply it would be Ghana. Oh, if we are programming to Ghana, we will reprogram Ghana. It will shoot to the foremost nation of the world within 18 months. Why Ghana? Why Ghana? Why Ghana? Why Ghana? Well, you see, Ghana has a more monolithic yeah, makeup. And to destroy, to reprogram Ghana yeah, really is easier than reprogramming Nigeria. Nigeria. You see, the people who wrote the program of Nigeria wrote a very complex program, a complex equation. So we are blaming many people who will just be talking about Buhari and how it has nothing to do with Buhari. Nothing to do with the president of Nigeria. It doesn't matter whether it was Buhari or let's even bring that people come and put him there and come and tell me whether our economy will jump, will jump to be three times out of uh, Atlanta Airport. So, in a way, we are all victims. Even the Shiite. <laughs> Everybody wants a better life, but doesn't know how to get there. So, now that you are back, we need young men like you to sit down. Maybe you are the one who organize and let's have a, a, a seminar on programming and let me come and teach some. That's why I said the greatest legacy we can give you, I've spent about 40 years putting together an understanding of programming. Okay? Only to discover that there is no textbook. Only to discover that when I even speak to sometimes PhD professors who study economics, it's amazing that they cannot see how they themselves are programmed to keep us in bondage. They don't even understand the elements of programming. They don't understand the templates of the program. You be even in church that you're talking about, your inferiority complex and my inferiority complex is reinforced in church more than anywhere else. Because mm -hmm. when I, as a pastor, I never wear native clothes. I always wear the world best suits in the world. What am I telling you? What am I announcing? What am I preaching? Not what I'm preaching with my mouth. Oh. What is my Audemars yeah. Piguet wristwatch, my Italian cut suits, my cravat, <clears throat> my Russell and Bromley shoes, and even my accent? Because if you say Shia, will I accept it? No. If you say Shidren, will I accept it? No. A German speaks English with a guttural accent. Nobody, he doesn't think he's inferior. Chinese speak English with Chinese accent. He doesn't feel he's inferior. Just blow one grammar like this. They will not even look at you as if, therefore, your value is even what? Less. So your value increases the better the English you speak. Is that how God sees you? So it will take the program. <laughs> now I see that that one enter well. well. That one enter well. well. Yeah. No, point is like, God, you are not pronouncing it. Why is the H factor? H factor. Uh, so what? What's the other point I thought I said, see, how would they know I'm from Nigeria? Uh -huh. from Nigeria? <laughs> Meanwhile, you are looking down on me because I said share. Meanwhile, a German, you don't look down on him. A friend, somebody Italian, Spanish man, Spanish man retains his own accent. But don't because I said cousin Sia, you begin to deride me. <laughs> Like you now, your daughter now, she's growing. You have a daughter, have you? No. Not yet. Okay, you are going to have I a daughter. Have a daughter. Oh, good. Yeah. If a guy now comes and wants to marry your daughter, mm -hmm. I say, Honku, mm -hmm. Honku, uh, please, sir, he uh, wants to marry your, your daughter, sir. Uh, 
Say, Molly Dubos only see Isa. Will you marry your daughter? With uh, is it like the Abbey Molly Dubos? No, 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 so I'm young and I'm actually one of those people that want change. That you want this kind of change? I want to change. You are tired of being judged by your English. Mm. Or by, by your suit. By your, yeah, my, by your dressing. Yeah, I should be. So <laughs> when I say yes, it's just to say that if at that feel before she gets to that point, I will things have changed. comfortable. Why not? But what if things have not yet changed? Ah, no, no. I have the class. <laughs> now, do you now see how even inside you, the program that made it necessary for you to run to UAE, mm -hmm. yeah. the program that wanted to make you run out of Nigeria, mm -hmm. can you say that all of us are participants mm -hmm. in that program? So this is the note on which we are going to end. A final word. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not going to it. But basically, yes, we, we need to. We need that, that, that program that we're talking about. Yeah. Final word. We need we need to open our, our mind. We should open our mind to to change. Final word. A new program is possible in Nigeria. Well, you can't do better than the way you think. So that's what we need. To well, do. on that note, we're wrapping up again for today. We just hope that before you anybody travels, realize this: what we're telling you, there are programs in place. And the truth is this: let's advise you. No matter what nation you travel to, they have a program there. That program will absorb you. And the programs are designed in such a way that after three generations, nobody will remember you came. Your children's children will have been absorbed into the system. They will never speak your father's language. Mm -hmm. The songs your mother sang to you in her language, your great grandchildren will never hear those songs. Mm -hmm. The kind of clothes and dressings that were so regal that God used to beautify our own parents, your great 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 grandchildren will despise those clothes and never be related to it. Mm -hmm. In fact, after three generations, the only record that you will have in those foreign nations is the tax you paid. So you will think that, well, you ran away from Nigeria's uh, discomfort and had a few decades of, uh, of uh, uh, alleviation from uh, for poverty alleviation <laughs> in the nation where you went. But you are going to find out that if only one set of people will learn not to fear death, if only one set of people will learn the, the programming, we will, we will find out that we have to be limiting the Nigerian passport. Americans will want the Nigerian passport. British people will want the Nigerian passport. Arabs will be trying to get the Nigerian passport. We will insist that you can't just come and get a Nigerian passport because the new program we will write will have so valued the life of a Nigerian that the program that makes America, America, the program that makes Britain, Britain, the program that makes Dubai, the UAE, what it is, will not be as good as the new program that we are writing. Then you'll find that nobody needs to fight, nobody knows whether you are north or south, whether you are Igbo, Yoruba, all those things will pale because the national program will give you such value that you will rather align with the national program than waste your energy. But there must be one generation that will sacrifice themselves to bring this program. So who will bear the cards? On that note, see you all. Bye then. <laughs> ah, gosh. Uh.